Good day, students. This is GE6103, Living in the IT Era. And I am your OLC, Ms. Chris Elaine Pico Prera. And now we will be discussing the introduction to digital age. A very important and a very timely topic to talk about because it seems right now the digital age is changing everything. It changes the family, getting in touch over phones and social networks. It changes the way economy works, including the labor market that you're about to enter. It revolutionizes government and public administration. It modernized concept production of entertainment. It transforms the health sector. It changes the way people fight and fall in love. It triggers political revolution. And last but not the least, it seems like it is changing education. The proof of concept is being me that I am talking to you through this recorded virtual class. But before we go further with our discussion, by the end of this topic, you are expected to know when the digital age took place. Second, identify the different types of communication from early time up to the present. And third is for you to know the role and importance of ICT. What does it mean when we say digital age? It is a period in human history that started when computers were introduced in 1970s. The digital age, also termed as the information age, computer age, or the new media age. An important thing to note is that the meaning of digital age will continue to change over time as new technologies or devices will be developed through research and development that will ultimately impact how we as humans will interact. Digital age is a component to ICT or the information and communication technology, which pertains to the unification and integration of telecommunication lines. When you say unification, it is making it as a whole. Computers, softwares, and systems that enables access, storage, transmittal, and manipulation of information. It concentrates on advancing the way we communicate in this information or digital age. Let's now discuss the evolution of communication. From the first written word up to the internet. Let's start with the cave paintings and carved stones. So cave paintings and carved stones or imaginative art, or some form of common communication that were discovered by Neanderthals or the early Homo sapiens and dates back to 130,000 to 100 BC. From cave paintings and carved stones, communication evolves into the use of carrier pigeons. Use of homing pigeons, which dates back to no less than 2,900 BC, 
when ships coming into Egyptian ports discharge pigeons to report imperative guests. The Egyptian army likewise utilizes rare pigeons for military correspondence. By 776, transporter pigeons were being utilized to convey the news of Olympic triumph to Athens. After the use of carrier pigeons, we have this marathon man. The story of Pidipides is that which inspired the sporting spectacles of marathon running. Philippides, an Athenian herald or courier, was said to have run from Marathon to Athens to report that Greeks won against the Persians in the Battle of Marathon. That is how Marathon Man, as a way of communication, started. Next, we have this, the first daily newspaper. The first daily newspaper ever to be distributed was in Comende Zutine. In July 1, 1650s, at Leipzig, Germany. So the name of the newspaper means approaching daily papers. So after Marathon Uman, we have this, the first daily newspaper. Then our communication evolves to Telegraph. It worked by transmitting electrical flags over wire laid between stations. Notwithstanding designing the broadcast, Samuel Morse built up a code which came to be the known as Morse code. Telegraph was created in 1840s by Samuel Morse and other different designers. So from telegraph, our communication evolved to having a telephone. Alexander Graham Bell, best known as the designer of the phone, worked at a school for a hard of hearing, while at the same time endeavoring to imagine a machine that would transmit sound over or by power. Bell was awarded as the principal official patent for his phone in March 7, 1876. However, he would later face a very long time of lawful difficulties to his case that he was its sole creator because he claims that he is the only, the sole creator, but not. He is a co-creator bringing about one of the history's longest patent site. After telephone, our way of communication upgrades into radio signals. An Italian inventor pioneered a long distance radio transmission and transmitted the first transatlantic radio signal. From radio signal, we have this television broadcast. In April 7, 1927, AT&T, a Bell Telephone Company, held the first public demonstration of long distance television transmission. Reporters watched at a TV image of Secretary of Commerce Herbert Hoover, who was sent from Washington DC to New York by phone lines. So from radio signal, we have this television set, and then our way of communication evolves into internet or the internet working. It began with when packet switching networks or the transfer of small pieces of data across various networks. 
which includes the ARPANET or the Advanced Research Project Agency Network. The network that became the basis of the internet, so that is ARPANET. Project of the U.S. Protection Office joined multiple separate networks into a network of networks. So internet before is a network of networks. After that, we have this World Wide Web. The World Wide Web, commonly known as the web, is an information system where documents and other web resources are identified by uniform or URL, uniform resource locators. It was developed from 1989 to 1994. So the World Wide Web was developed in 1989 to 1994 at the European Council for Nuclear Research. World Wide Web was made freely available to the world in 1994. Then our way of communication evolves in have to have instant messaging. Instant messaging technology is a type of online chat allowing real-time text transmission over the internet or another computer network. It basically began in 70s and 80s, but the new era of instant messaging can be credited to the America Online or the AOL, which gained popularity in May 1997. After having the instant messaging, we have blogging as our way of communication. In 1999, the world or the world blog sprung up and after five years the term blog was announced to expression of the year by Mariah Webster. A discussion or informational website published on the World Wide Web consisting of discrete, often informal diary or diary style text entries or posts. So that is blog. Then we now have this Facebook, the world's most mainstream interpersonal interaction. It was launched in February 2004 and was founded by Mark Zuckerberg. Facebook now is our way of communication. And we also have this Twitter. Twitter was created by Jack Dorsey. Noel Glass, Business Stone, and Evan Williams in the year 2006. It rapidly gained popularity as of 2017 and has 100 million daily active users. That is Twitter as our way of communication. So those are the evolution, or that is the evolution of our communication from cave paintings and carved stones, then by using the internet as our way of communication. Now let's proceed to the importance of ICT. So ICT or the information communication technology is has our many benefits and importance to our society. For health, it gives us easy access to patient records. It gives access to medical information. We can have online appointments. Database for medical inventory, and we can organize information about individual patients. For education, ICT is important and has a great benefit for education in terms of research and resources over the internet. New ways and style of learning, such as this virtual class. Remote learning and skills for life. For the solution of crime, media and communication. 
storage and access of information. Also, we can use ICT in forensic tracing and fraud prevention, database and prevention of fraud, and it saves time. For communication, there are ways of communication using ICT. Communication using emails or IM, instant messaging. We can have easy communication system benefits. For business, ICT has a great importance and benefits for business in terms of changing ways of business. Information technology, e-commerce, or selling and buying online, online banking for work. Work can be carried out easily. Information about work can be accessed from anywhere and anytime. Work can be taken to different locations. And for business, it is efficient and organized way of storing files. Therefore, by using ICT systems, we are more productive as we are able to deal with vast amounts of information and transmit and receive it quickly. So that is the end of the topic, Introduction to Digital Age. The next meeting will have digital development as our topic. Thank you and God bless everyone.